Okay, my name is uh, Jonas Hansson and I am uh, president of the International Affairs Committee of uh, uh, my organization. Uh, and the name of my organization is RFSL in Sweden. And that means uh, the Swedish Federation for Gay, Bisexual, Lesbian and Transgender Rights. The organization was founded in 1950, so it's one of the oldest LGBT organizations in the world, actually. And uh, I have been active in RFSL for 20 years. So in 1950, when my organization was founded, uh, by a teacher. Uh, this man who was the founder of the organization, he was called in the media the bravest man in Sweden because in those days uh, it was not so easy to be a gay and lesbian in Sweden and uh, it was uh, also uh, illegal to be homosexual until in the 50s. So uh, it has happened lots of things uh, since then uh, in Sweden uh, especially uh, after uh, the 60s uh, and uh, during 1970, 80, many changes in attitudes uh, came to society and today uh, we have also uh, many uh, laws protecting uh, gays and lesbians and transgender people and uh, in most areas today uh, we have uh, equal rights uh, uh, same rights, all people in the society, not uh, in, in depending on what uh, sexual orientation you have or uh, gender identity. So uh, I think today uh, we have a very tolerant uh, society in Sweden. Of course, there are still also people against uh, LGBT persons, uh, but there are not uh, so many. We have a very strong support from the society, from the politicians. Uh, uh, in the government uh, we have a strong support and also cooperation with the, the ministers of the government and also with the members of the parliament. Today uh, we are working uh, more and more in the international area. Uh, and we have the possibility to share uh, knowledge about, for instance, uh, uh, working with anti-discrimination questions, uh, working with uh, LGBT uh, questions in the schools and uh, working places. We have big uh, projects within the European Union in these uh, areas. And we are trying also to, to spread the information international. So uh, our news, the international project, for instance, is in Uganda in Africa uh, so it recently started but uh, it's very interesting and it's a strong interest from the organizations in Uganda to participate even though it's a crime in their country uh, being gay and lesbian. Other countries we are cooperating with is for instance uh, Turkey. We are helping a uh, Turkish, uh, Turkish organization to publish a uh, LGBT magazine and spreading it in all over Turkey and uh, we also have a big uh, cooperation uh, with the countries all uh, in the Baltic Sea area. Uh, the Baltic uh, countries, Poland, uh, also Russia and Belarus uh, and uh, at the moment we are in uh, St. Petersburg in a conference with the uh, organizations from eight different countries discussing uh, how we can cooperate together in different areas in society. The first uh, context uh, between Arvisal and Russia uh, was made uh, in 1998. It was in the north uh, west of uh, Russia and uh, it was actually a local branch of Arvisal in the north uh, made contact with people in Murmansk. So uh, after that uh, we started a cooperation uh, in the Barents region, the, the northern part of, of Scandinavia and northwest Russia. So every year we have a Barents uh, conference in one of the countries. Uh, we have been, for instance, in Murmansk and in Petrosovsk in Russia. and. Uh, from the beginning it was only Murmansk who was included, but since a couple of years uh, back 
Uh, there is also an organization in Karelia, in Petrosovets, called Krug Karelia, uh, which we have a very good uh, cooperation and contact with. And uh, they have been uh, to conferences in, for instance, Sweden and uh, also in Russia. And we have uh, also had a big uh, conference in Petrosovets in 2005, which was a very successful uh, and in this conference there was also guests from different organizations, uh, among them from uh, Poland, but uh, also from Sweden, from the Gay uh, Police Association in Sweden, uh, and from the Gay uh, Military uh, Organization in Sweden, that is uh, organizations uh, within the armed forces working with LGBT questions and uh, also within the police uh, Force, uh, there is a special organization for LGBT policemen. And uh, our vessel uh, adopted in uh, this year, uh, only one month ago, uh, an international uh, strategy, uh, how we are going to continue our international work. And uh, one of the countries that we want to develop further cooperation with is uh, Russia. We believe that uh, it's a big need to strengthen th strengthen the organizations for LGBT persons in Russia, uh, and uh, we are uh, offering also our support uh, in that. One of the things we are doing is the Barnes Cooperation uh, with also education of activists. And uh, at the moment, uh, the project we are uh, in within now it's uh, supported by Nordic Council of Ministers. And uh, we have this conference in St. Pittsburgh to discuss uh, how we can find new uh, cooperation projects. It's difficult to say exactly how Russia will be included in the future, uh, but I think uh, the Russian uh, groups and organizations uh, will be in need of capacity development uh, and also training of activists. Uh, there is still lots of things to do in Russia. Russia is a very big country and uh, it's lots of small groups and uh, also the climate for LGBT work in Russia is not uh, the same as in Sweden. It's still uh, lots of work to be done in context with the uh, Russian government, the Russian politics and uh, we hope uh, that it will be possible in the future also to uh, to make some law changes so that uh, LGBT persons in Russia will be regarded equal as uh, uh, heterosexual people and uh, also in the law. But uh, very important is also to, to work uh, in areas to change uh, the attitudes. There are uh, many people in Russia with quite negative attitudes um, against LGBT persons and I think uh, one reason of that is that uh, uh, they are afraid and they don't know so much, so it's uh, important with more information and uh, also uh, information that uh, LGBT rights is not a special uh, area uh, important only for this group, it's important for the whole society, it's a part of the uh, human rights uh, that all people are, should be able to uh, live free as they wish and uh, according to uh, their sexual orientation and other uh, aspects of lives. So I hope this will be uh, respected uh, even more in the future in, in Russia also. So one of the problems in, in Russia uh, is uh, the intolerant uh, persons uh, within the church and uh, we have also had the same uh, problems, so to say, in Sweden uh, before the church was very negative, and uh, but the Swedish church has uh, uh, changed, and today they are more and more uh, uh, accepting uh, LGBT persons, uh, and also you can uh, make uh, ceremonies uh, in the church for uh, gay and lesbian couples. I think the Russian uh, Orthodox Church will have to change uh, also and to learn more about these questions. It's a difficult problem uh, for the church, but uh, the church is uh, uh, very important in Russian society and uh, they have to, to show that they accept uh, all persons and uh, as long as no one is hurting another one, another person, everyone should have the right to live uh, uh, their life. 
And this is a question that the Russian Orthodox Church must discuss uh, much more. Uh, I hope uh, it will be able in the f future. But I have noticed, uh, for instance, um, uh, in uh, working in the Baltic countries uh, and uh, also when I'm visiting uh, Moscow Pride, that there are, uh, unfortunately, that uh, people from the church are working uh, close together with the uh, national groups and uh, I think that's uh, very bad uh, for the church to be connected with the, the very uh, angry and homophobic uh, nationalist uh, groups so uh, the church should be uh, together with us instead and show that the love is for everyone. So uh, in the future I hope that uh, Russia will be more accepting uh, uh, regarding uh, LGBT rights. Uh, I know in Sweden it took uh, many years, uh, maybe from the 50s when it was uh, forbidden until today. Uh, hopefully it will not take so long time in, in, in Russia, uh, but uh, it's important to start a process uh, already. I think it's all already started, but it has to uh, become uh, uh, much faster and uh, for the Russian uh, politi politicians it's a very important target uh, group uh, uh, for instance uh, working uh, with hate crimes against homosexuals uh, no one should be beaten because of, of the one uh, the person that you love so uh, uh, I hope the discussion can uh, continue uh, how the society in Russia will be able to protect uh, LGBT persons and that they can feel safe in the society. Unfortunately, it's taking a very long time uh, at the moment and uh, it has to speed up. So I, it's difficult to say how long time it will take for, for Russia to adopt the uh, uh, LGBT rights uh, as a part of the human rights system. You can look uh, look to the international conventions about human rights, and uh, it has been in different courts that uh, LGBT rights is part of that the human rights. So, of course, Russia must also respect it. It's difficult for me to say exactly how the Russian LGBT organizations should continue their work, but. Uh, uh, I think the one important thing, uh, thing is the vis visibility that, uh, to be visible in the society, uh, to be a part of the media, for instance, that uh, people can see that there are also LGBT persons. For instance, when it's, uh, it's being made a film or the, uh, something on the television, uh, also LGBT persons uh, should be included as a national part of it. Uh, Many times uh, uh, when media reports about LGBT persons, it's uh, only uh, to make it uh, as, like a scandal or so. so it has to be a normal uh, thing, uh, something that uh, we can see every day on the television and when we go out to meet our friends, people can be open uh, about their uh, homosexuality and um, to do that it's important that uh, People can uh, come, uh, come out uh, and uh, be proud of, of themselves. Some people uh, may need uh, also help, uh, like counseling, and uh, I think uh, the LGBT organizations uh, might arrange some of that uh, themselves, but uh, they might also need uh, the help from the society because uh, if you're from a, a country where uh, LGBT persons are. Uh, are considered uh, not equal as other persons. It's difficult to come out, uh, of course, for your family, but also for your friends. And, uh, and then uh, the, the persons uh, feel uh, not so happy in their lives. So to be able to be, be happy in your life, you have to be uh, proud of who, who you are and be able to be uh, open in the society. That's the most important thing, I, I think, for uh, for Russia, uh, then, uh, of course, uh, changing uh, the laws is uh, another side of it. So, uh, for instance, in my country, it's possible for uh, for gay persons, uh, lesbian persons, to to get married and to adopt children. And uh, 
In my country, it's also uh, against the law uh, with hate crimes, and uh, we have several other uh, areas uh, in the society where uh, we are uh, we have the same rights, of course, as everyone uh, else. Uh, actually, most uh, laws in Sweden are now changed, so there is no difference uh, to, between heterosexuals and homosexuals. Uh, one thing that is being discussed a lot in, in Russia, I, I know, and which is very visible, is uh, the Moscow Pride uh, event. And um, uh, I don't uh, really know why it's uh, such a big thing, uh, because in my country, in, in Sweden, uh, in Stockholm, we have every summer uh, uh, Stockholm Pride, and this year it's also Euro Pride. And uh, then uh, homosexuals uh, walk together in the parade together with heterosexuals. And uh, every year it's uh, at least a couple of uh, ministers uh, from the government and uh, members of the parliament and uh, uh, famous uh, artists and persons also walking in the parade. Uh, this is uh, to show the, the support uh, to the LGBT society and it's an important thing also for LGBT persons to feel proud of who they, they are and feel that they are among friends so maybe it shouldn't be done exactly in the same way in Russia but I don't think it's something to be afraid of it's not a provocation it's a, a pride event is a, a possibility for people to come together and uh, feel that they belong to to the society, and that they have uh, many other persons uh, uh, also uh, in the society that are the same as themselves. The question about what country would be the best in the world to live in for a, a gay, lesbian, or transgender person is very difficult to answer. I don't think that Sweden is uh, the paradise in, in the world, but it's at least one of the countries when, where you have the protection of society, of police and so on. Uh, there are of course, of course other countries uh, in, the, in the West uh, it's very difficult to say exactly what country uh, is uh, the best uh, to live in. I think you can also have a very good life in, in Russia as a gay or lesbian or transgender person. Uh, I know many LGBT persons in, in Russia that are also happy with their lives. Uh, so uh, it depends uh, very much on who you are yourself. The question about what country would be the worst in, in the world, uh, well, there are, I think today, seven countries in the world where you can get uh, killed uh, because uh, that you are a gay or lesbian, especially if you are a male. And uh, one of the, the worst countries uh, is of course uh, Iran and uh, some uh, Arabic uh, countries where you can get very severe punished or even uh, hanged uh, if you are a gay or lesbian person so this is very terrible and uh, we have to fight uh, from the rest of the world to make them change uh, the laws in these countries to respect every human being's right okay. Regarding the, the church and the re religions, uh, it's very difficult for me to, to say. I think all re religions have persons that uh, disapprove of uh, LGBT persons in some way, and also in, in the Christian church uh, there is opposition. And uh, of course, it's dangerous if a special religion or church uh, makes uh, as an assignment to work uh, against LGBT persons. Uh, it's very dangerous for, for the society, so it's not good, but I, I cannot say that uh, any religion uh, uh, would be actually worse than uh, an, an another. Uh, I'm not a rel religious expert, so it's very difficult to say. I hope that all re religions in the future will be able to respect as, uh, as individuals.